you can see, I'm uh, surrounded by blinking LEDs. I've got a couple of uh, towers of them over here that will be the focus of this discussion. Uh, a big ring that's rotating round and round, a couple of small rings that you can see here. And they're hooked up uh, to the same processor as this uh, five meter long strip of LEDs. Now the, the ones that I'm using here are a little bit unusual. We're all familiar with strip lights like this. This is a, a strip of white LEDs uh, hooked up to 12 volts or so worth of batteries. And uh, they're nice. I mean, they're inexpensive. They're very bright. And they come in a number of different colors. They come in, this is bright white and warm white and blue and green and red and so on. But they are only one color. The advantage of the ones that you see here on the, on the workbench, these individual LEDs can light in any one of a number of different colors, actually hundreds and thousands of different colors. Each of these little units here between my thumbnails is five millimeters on a side, and inside of it are three individual LEDs, three uh, light emitting diodes. And one is red, one is green, one is blue. And by varying the amount of each of those colors that are uh, turned on, you can have, again, tens of thousands of different colors and different brightness levels and so on. But the things that's really magical about it, you can connect these strips up to a controller. As a matter of fact, you have to connect them up to a controller, otherwise they won't work at all. And that controller can be anything from a little AT tiny Arduino, a little 8-pin chip, uh, to an Arduino Uno or a smaller version. This is a Nano that's on the board back here. And that controller can individually address each one of those LEDs. There happen to be 16 that are being used right here. And tell it whether to be on or not, and if it is on, what color and what brightness level. So you have an awful lot of flexibility. Here we see 144 different LEDs being controlled by a little 8-pin Arduino. What I'd like to do now is to concentrate a little bit more on this particular uh, array of LEDs. Actually, the two of these are almost identical. But before I do, I'd like to mention that these are available in a bunch of different formats. This is a strip of 144 LEDs spaced, oh, I don't know, maybe an inch and a half apart. And this is about five meters long. This is an identical strip, except the LEDs are about as close together as they can be. There's, oh, perhaps a sixteenth of an inch in between each of these as opposed to well over an inch here. And this is about a meter long. Uh, you can also buy these in a rectangular array. This array happens to be eight by eight. Same LEDs, just arranged differently. This is a small 16 LED circle. Actually, there's two of them back to back. Uh, that are running. And this is a 64 LED uh, circle. And you can see going up here, it's another strip. These are a little bit closer, something in between this one and this one. These are about, oh, maybe five eighths of an inch in between the LEDs. Okay, I'm going to shut these down uh, while we talk about the one in the middle here because they're a little bit uh, bright and somewhat distracting. Uh, the way this is hooked up, there's a microcontroller in the tube. It fits right inside of that, along with a voltage uh, controller, a step down that takes 12 volts that's going into that and steps it down to 5 volts. Same thing over here, only this time it's external. I've got the microcontroller. This is an Arduino uh, Pro Mini over here. This is the voltage controller that takes 12 volts and drops it down to 5, and the wiring is done in here. But the, regardless of how you do it, the microcontroller can go in the base or down here. It is connected to three pins that come out of the LED strip. One is plus five, one is ground, and one is called data in or just in. And that's where the data pin from the Arduino is connected. Uh, the plus five and the ground, of course, goes to your power source. Uh, might want to make a comment about that. You need to have a decent amount of uh, current at 5 volts. 
I'm pulling as, as much as an amp on each of these as they run, particularly when they get into the pure white uh, display or the pure blues. Those seem to draw the most. Uh, so you need the decent amount of current, otherwise it's not going to work properly. So what I did, took a piece of plastic pipe, cut a little notch in it, so the LEDs start inside of the tubing and then come out through that notch and then wrap around. And at the top, there's another notch where the LED can go back in, so all the wiring is hidden inside. Spray painted this black, of course. Wrap them around. Then at the top, I took the three pins that are at the other end of the strip and connected those to a 16 LED circle. Only I connected the out pin here to the in pin here, plus five here to plus five, ground to ground. And I wound up with 144 plus 16 LEDs in this particular array. And now this is going to go to Children's Hospital and become part of a, uh, a display of the circus on the, the large scale uh, train layout that's there. Now for more information about how to wire this, and the wiring is very simple. Uh, all you need really is one pin from the Arduino to drive this uh, information to the, uh, to the strip lights. Uh, the, uh, the software that you need to make the uh, the LEDs flash as they're doing, and other information about where you can get these, um, these strip lights uh, are found on my webpage. Before I forget, the base for this is simply a, a piece of quarter inch MDS, MDF, rather, medium density fiberboard that I cut out on my laser cutter. And you can see I cut a circle for the, uh, the plastic pipe, and that'll go right in there, and then some ovals. And the ovals are set up so that I can telescope that and wind up with the steps that you see here, uh, glued those, and then simply spray painted that flat block. And I wound up with, I think, a fairly nice uh, display uh, that I hope the kids at Children's Hospital enjoy. I hope you enjoy, too. If you have any questions, again, trainelectronics.com will have information on this, or you can drop me an email, dave at davebodner.com. Thanks.